up you phonies how's it going welcome to another blender tutorial in today's video i want to try a very creepy effect and i'm just going to show you the basics how you can do that because i had this vision of a very cool horror scene where a hand reaches out through a wall i'm not going to do this effect today I'm just going to show you the basics how you can accomplish that for your own shots and in the next video I'm going to show you how can you implement this effect in a real life scene. So it's going to be a two part video. I hope you're just as excited as I am and let's get started. So we are here inside of Blender. I'm using Blender 3.5 so any version newer than that will work. So I'm starting here in my scene with a camera and a cube. We can keep the camera, we will delete the cube, we're not gonna need that. With X you can delete objects. So the first thing we need is a plane. That's gonna be our wall. So with Shift A, we're gonna go mesh, make a plane. Now we're gonna rotate the plane around the X axis to bring it 90 degrees. You can type it on your numpad on the right. This plane is two by two meters, which will do for today's effect. So let's go closer here. So the important part about this effect is, you've seen it in the, in the intro, that we need lots of subdivision on our plane. Right now, when I hit tab to go in edit mode, we see this plane has no subdivisions. So this effect wouldn't work because what we're trying to do is bring an object through my plane here and then we have all of these weird distortions and displacements and that only works if we have enough subdivisions. The way we're gonna do that in edit mode, just hit right click, subdivide, now increase this number here by a lot. If you don't have such a powerful computer, don't go crazy here. If your computer is all right, go up to 30 or preferably 40 and that'll do. The more you have, the longer the computer is gonna take to bake this thing, so keep that in mind. But before we do that, let's go back. There's also a great modifier for this, which is working undestructively, and that's the subdivision modifier, the uh, surface modifier, there you go. This is what it looks like when you go in simple, you have your plane back, and then you can increase the number here, and it basically has the same effect, and once you're happy with your result, you can just go on this arrow and apply it. Same effect but we're gonna go with the traditional way. So 40 it is, click away. Now we have all these subdivisions. So if I, I could model this now and have some crazy effects because I have all those subdivisions. But we're gonna go to back to object mode. Now what we're gonna need is the under the physics properties, the dynamic paint. Now under the type, we have two different types. We have the brush and we have canvas. That here is gonna be our canvas. So add canvas and under surface type, there is a few different ones and two are most useful for our purposes with VFX like that is displace and waves. I'm, just, I'm not gonna go into much detail here what they do, but displace basically means when you move an object through, it just displaces my plane, this is the plane, and it's gonna stay like this. But when I use waves, when I move an object into this, it's gonna basically wave it all out. And that's what we're gonna need here. So we're gonna use waves, we're gonna adjust all those numbers here in a second, but first we need an object going through my canvas. So with Shift A, I'm gonna make a new object. In my final video, I'm gonna use a hand, but just to keep things simple here, I'm gonna just use a torus. And that torus also, I'm gonna rotate amongst the X axis 90 degrees, bring it right behind my object here. It's too big, I'm gonna scale it down so you can see the effect better. I'm gonna bring it up closer to my object. There you go. Now when we zoom close here, we can also see that this could use a few more subdivisions. So we're gonna to go to edit mode and right click, subdivide, not as crazy here. One will do the trick. Now shade smooth and also click on your plane here. Also right click shade smooth. Now the idea is that our object here is gonna go through our plane and it's going a little down 
and scrolling back. This is what we're trying to accomplish here. So let's go to our first frame and animate the location. So I hover over location, hit I, go, let's say, 24 frames to the front, move my object through my plane, maybe a little down. This is going to be my second keyframe. And that took like one second now. It's fine. And now let's say two seconds. So until frame 75, bring my object to the bottom of my canvas plane, make another keyframe there. And now let's say another second to remove it from my plane and make another keyframe. So now when we look at it, we see it's coming through and it's coming back out. And that should do for the animation. Now what we're going to need is, because you can see it's just poking through, the effect is not happening yet. And the reason why is that we have to make our torus also a dynamic paint object. So with your torus selected, click dynamic paint. Now we have the same settings we had before, but now instead of canvas, we want to use the torus as a brush. Now add brush and you pretty much don't have to set anything here because we're just going to use it as a brush to distort or displace our plane. So you don't, you can leave those settings alone. But now if you go to the very first frame and look at your animation, you can see that something cool is happening. You see all those waves here, all this cool distortion, and that's basically the effect we want. Now, even if you turn off the visibility, if you hide the torus, it's still gonna happen. And that's a very cool and creepy effect. Imagine this is happening to the wall right behind you. That'd be pretty sick. Now, I told you there's a few settings we can adjust, which are pretty cool. For example, what I don't like is that it's wavy just like water. I don't want it to be like water. I want it to be more like a sheet, that something is poking through a sheet. So the wall is basically a sheet. And that way I'm going to do that by increasing the damping by a little, let's say 0.5. You don't want it to increase it too much. And now it's not waving too much. It's more like more of a subtle, subtle effect, but it is pretty cool. And when we increase the spring, you can see what that does. It basically makes it a little more stiff. And when you look at this, you see this, all those edges here, that happens because I don't have that many subdivisions. If I had more, those edges would be smoother. But again, that would increase your render time, so be careful with that. Let's increase the smoothness by five, and let's see what it looks like now. Mm, way better, without increasing the subdivisions, it looks already way better. Awesome. Now let's replace this torus with maybe a little more interesting object. So let's just model something real quick. Shift A, let's start with a UV sphere. Bring it over here, make it a little smaller, apply the scale. Let's go to edit mode and to sculpt mode. Just making a little face real quick. It's not going to be perfect, but you, you, you'll get the idea. Making a little beautiful smiley face, because oh, why not? We should all be more smiling in our world, don't you, be, don't you think so? Okay, great. Now let's use this little face here to actually poke through our plane. So I'm going to redo the animation a little, move our torus completely. So now, in side view, our plane is right here, first frame. Go on item, make sure your sphere or your face or whatever you modeled is selected. Hover over location, hit I, move it into your plane, hit I, move it down until it's completely low, hit I, another second, and have it removed. And hit I again, there you go. Also, just for funsies, I'm going to animate the rotation just through the entire thing. Now, of course, we need to give my sphere also the dynamic paint effect. It is a brush, add brush. And now when we watch it, we can see that it's giving me the same waves like before. You can see it's the shape of a face. If, and again, we can adjust those settings, maybe less smoothness, maybe we're going to see it better. And when you set up cool lights, and just with a little imagination, this is going to look super badass. Now imagine something would be poking through the wall in your living room. Maybe you can record your sister 
and put this effect right behind her and show her the video of her and prank her real good she's going to be so scared and just imagine the possibilities you can do with this so i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video where we're actually going to put this in a real life scene i'm very excited i hope you are too and see you in the next video Doo -doo -doo.